Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I bring you warm greetings from the people of Kenya. The 20th century witnessed the greatest socio-economic and even political and cultural transformation than humanity had ever witnessed in the entire history of its existence, thanks to the technological innovation that we see. It is easy to forget that the internal combustion engine enabled humanity achieve speed on Earth, flight across skies, and explore outer space, and that from atomic energy and nuclear power to the television and X-ray, as well as the microwave and magnetic resonance imaging, humanity was able to solve problems that seemed insurmountable for millennia, thereby unlocking possibilities which made new modes of economic and industrial organization inevitable, transforming societies, economies, and states for good. For all this, nothing in the past century compares in terms of sheer speed and scale of transformation, as well as implication for human well-being and disruptive socioeconomic change with what we have experienced over the past few decades since the advent of computing and the miraculous explosion of ICTs, robotics, automation, machine learning, and of course, artificial intelligence. All change produces its winners and losers. Just as in the petroleum-powered age, the silicon-powered era is caused a mass extinction of professions and ways of life and replacing them with new ones. Similarly, the possibilities unleashed by the new industrial revolution are also redefining the opportunity and threat terrains across sectors. There has never been a time when thresholds of change were not only periods of intense debate, but also controversy. Innovations elicit resistance and attempts to suppress or adapt it to the status quo. The fear of the unknown can be a real and huge drawback to progress and governments, however, if they are to remain relevant, agile and responsive, must of, as of necessity move, facilitate, encourage, and champion change. From my experience with innovation in Kenya, I would say that it is wise to be vigilant against adverse implications, antisocial applications, and other threats that can arise due to unregulated or reckless experimentation with unsafe, scientifically untenable, or theoretically unsound technologies. Yet, and I repeat, yet, this must never be a ground to stand in the way of solutions to humanity's pressing needs. Our proudest moment as Kenya which has come to define our country in the digital technology space is mobile money. And Mokhtar Diop has referred to it shortly, which first emerged in our country as M-Pesa. When Safaricom launched the service 17 years ago, the country's banking sector was up in arms, pointing out that Safaricom had set out to conduct banking business without either obtaining a banking license or undergoing the rigors of banking regulation. For its part, the public eagerly embraced the liberating efficiency of mobile phone-based cash transfer. Many types of businesses quickly saw the benefit of cashless transaction and persuaded banks to enable them conduct their banking over the phone. After rigorous debate, Kenya opted to face the future with courage, and M-Pesa became the legendary driver of trade and commerce that it has become, transacting $1.2 billion every day, 
serving over 5 million enterprises, 61 million customers across eight countries and counting. In Kenya, we understand that the soul of innovation is the constant endeavor to meet public demand by providing solutions to problems, efficiently delivering effective services and transforming challenges into productive opportunities. With this understanding, we have exploited our digital revolution to transform the public and private service delivery landscape, enabling government to reach more people, accelerating the performance of key sectors, serve the previously marginalized, achieve inclusion, and improve the well-being of all, especially vulnerable and disadvantaged groups. Using mobile phone-based digital technologies, we have, for example, been able to register 5 million farmers and facilitate timely last mile delivery of appropriate farm inputs. In an economy powered by an informal sector which provides over 70% of employment and contributes to more than 75% of our GDP, our transformation agenda in Kenya dictated that affordable credit and financial inclusion be made available to the majority as a matter of urgency. The Financial Inclusion Fund, or the Hustler Fund, has made this nearly possible, liberating millions from predatory lenders through a digital lending and savings platform powered by our telcos. Affordable credit is now a normal part of every business, everyday business in our MSME sector. As we speak, the Hustler Fund serves 18.2 million customers and has dispersed 280 million US dollars in the last one year. Motivated by the resolve to achieve universal health coverage and make high quality medical services attainable throughout the country, we also have deployed 107,000 community health promoters to serve in every village in Kenya attend to citizens at their homes, capture diagnostic data with digital devices, and supervise medics using mobile phone. Recognizing that the efficiencies of technology extend beyond speed and security to inclusion, transparency, and integrity, we are now finalizing the process of enhancing e-government by digitizing all government processes and automating public services to make them accessible to all citizens. In the last one year, we have digitized government services from 5% to 80%. The plan is to make government 100% digital by the end of this year. From the difficult conversations Kenya had at the advent of our digital revolution in 2007, we have fully embraced the brave new world of digital governance and service delivery, together with all the benefits it brings. There is no doubt that changes, threats, and dangers exist, as they inevitably do in every field of human endeavor. What is required is unrelenting vigilance on a global scale, achieve, achievable through collective action, involving leaders and citizens in the public and private sector, back home and internationally. I will give you a personal experience. When I went to one village, and this speaks to the power of energy, technology, and youth in our continent. I went to one college in a village 400 kilometers from Nairobi in Kaiboi. And I meet this young man, Brian. And Brian is a diploma student who, because of the internet, because he has a computer and there is electricity, he now works for an AI company 
in Germany. Mind you, Brian does not have a passport. He has never been to the city of Nairobi. But because of technology, internet, and electricity, he now works not for a supermarket, but an AI company in Germany. That is what technology, innovation, power, and internet can bring. Breakfast approaches to climate action have placed the world's economies in a difficult position of having to choose between development and climate action. At the first African climate summit held in Nairobi in, in September last year, Africa defined its place in this discourse. With its abundant endowment of natural resources for green industrialization, including resources for green critical transition minerals, carbon sinks and arable land, as well as the highest green energy potential from solar, wind, to hydro and geothermal, Africa is the de facto epicenter of a green industrial revolution. It is no longer tenable nor sustainable to extract natural resources from Africa processed elsewhere using green gas emitting technologies. Green industrialization in Africa will simultaneously address unemployment, reduce inequality, discourage migration, while enhancing manufacturing efficiency and industrial sustainability. All it takes is investment, which calls for a measure of boldness and intentionality like that which channeled investments that turned the desert of Middle East to give us flourishing futuristic centers like Dubai. We must not allow the fear of the future unknown deprive bright youngsters like Brian of opportunities. If we sacrifice the benefits of progress hoping for security, we risk losing both. And if ever there was a case for great urgency in formulating a framework for deployment of AI and machine learning, young Brian and his cohort places it in sharp focus. We must not hesitate to mobilize collective action and even anchor it through a dedicated multilateral agency concerned with how humanity will flourish on a thriving planet in the future where we can all contribute resources and knowledge to improve our collective chances of winning now and winning in the future. Let me give you one final touch. Our tourism product has always been sustainable. Millions of tourists each year come to experience the global phenomenon of magical Kenya, a total of scenic beauty, unique flora and fauna, beautiful culture, and delightful hospitality. However, Kenya is not just the Silicon Savannah that is globally competitive digital ecosystem where solutions are constantly developed. Our Savannah grasslands plain is the theater where the earliest man confronted natural hundreds, uh, where the earliest man confronted nature hundreds of millions of years ago. It has been scientifically documented that humankind's earliest ancestors lived in our country, with their earliest remains and settlements having been discovered in the Lake Turkana Basin to the north of Kenya. The story of Aliman is narrated through well-preserved ancient fossils scattered throughout our country, leaving no doubt that Kenya is the first home of humankind. On top of an already excellent and globally competitive tourism product, the people of Kenya have a message for all people throughout the world. Visiting Africa and coming to Kenya is more than tourism. It is an epic homecoming. And I dare say, welcome home. You will agree with me 
finally, that Dubai is a good place to contemplate the future of the world. In this place, we have seen that courage, imagination, and science are the values we need to confront a challenging future with confidence and are far more precious than silver and gold. I thank the uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and his government for the unwavering dedication to progress through innovation and availability to engage in and facilitate robust conversations about humanity in the future. George Bernard Shaw said, you see things and I say why, but I dream things that never were and I say, why not? We must enhance our capability to continuously ask, why not, in order to stay ahead of a rapidly unfolding and wonderfully complicated future. That is why this summit is important. I thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency.